The diamondback moth is one of the most destructive pests in agriculture worldwide. It feeds on crops like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and canola, costing producers four for a five billion dollars annually. What's worse, fighting these moths is incredibly challenging. While many pests can be controlled with insecticides, the diamondback moth quickly becomes resistant to them. Today, it hardly reacts to any substances, including synthetic chemicals and organic pesticides. The diamondback moth simply doesn't care. But one company might have a game-changing solution. Thousands of genetically modified insects that could soon be on farms, ready to fight back. Until then, farmers are left battling this resilient pest with limited tools. Curious about more stories of nature's toughest survivors and groundbreaking solutions? Subscribe to stay ahead of the curve. You might just learn how science is rewriting the rules of the natural world. Before genetically modified insects became the cutting-edge solution, people used sterilized insects for decades to control pests. This method, known as the sterile insect technique, was primarily used to combat meat flies, a parasite of livestock, and a few other pests. By exposing male insects to x-rays, they were rendered sterile. These males were then released into the wild to mate with females, producing no offspring and gradually reducing the pest population. This approach proved far more effective than chemicals. In fact, a joint program by Panama and the US used this technique to create an invisible barrier along the Panama-Colombia border, releasing sterile flesh flies to control the spread of the parasite. Above the border, they've entirely eliminated the American tropical flesh fly, preventing massive agricultural losses. On average, the program saves $796 million a year. But radiation-based methods aren't perfect. Sterilization affects the male's vitality, making them less competitive against wild rivals. For the strategy to work, you need an enormous number of sterile males to outnumber the wild ones. Some experts liken it to using a sledgehammer, effective but not exactly gentle. And then there's the diamondback moth. Despite decades of effort, this pest has proven impervious to the same strategies that worked on others. It's migratory, spreading across the Americas, Europe, New Zealand, Southeast Asia, and any region where crops grow year-round. In areas with ideal conditions, not too hot or cold, the moth thrives, causing billions of dollars in damage annually. Here's how it spreads today and how the map might look in the future as it migrates further. Farmers and researchers have tried everything, from chemical sprays to natural predators and even radiation, but nothing has worked. Some farmers have spent over 30 years battling this pest, only to be outsmarted every time. The diamondback moth is a problem we urgently need to solve. Could genetically modified insects finally be the breakthrough we've been waiting for? Stay tuned for the next chapter in this ongoing fight against one of agriculture's greatest enemies. Back in the 1990s, researchers attempted to use radiation to control the diamondback moth. While it had some effect, the process left the moths unfit for life. They couldn't fly properly, let alone reproduce. This is where genetic engineering steps in as a game-changer. It's a far more precise tool, allowing scientists to make pests unable to produce viable offspring while still preserving their natural ability to fly and mate. Here's how it works. Researchers at Oxitec developed a lethality gene, known as the tetracycline transcription activator variant, TAV. While the name sounds complex, the concept can be simplified. Scientists combined DNA from Escherichia coli and the herpes simplex virus, injecting this genetic cocktail into insects. The modified male moths then mate with wild females, passing on the lethal gene. This gene causes female offspring to die as larvae, while male offspring survive and inherit the lethal gene. As these modified males grow and mate with more wild females, each subsequent generation sees a decline in the female population. Over time, the population of diamondback moths dwindles and eventually disappears. To track these engineered insects, they are also given a fluorescent marker gene, allowing researchers to spot them in the wild. Oxitec has already proven success with genetically modified mosquitoes designed to combat malaria and dengue fever. The same principle is now being applied to key agricultural pests like the diamondback moth. Despite the innovative approach, Oxitec's press releases carefully avoid using the term genetically modified, 
possibly to sidestep public fear of anything labelled GM. Instead, they refer to these insects as friendly, a term also used for their mosquito program. So why is this solution promising? Diamondback moths are notorious for quickly developing resistance to insecticides and other pest control methods. Genetically modified males, however, remain effective because their lab-borne modifications prevent resistance from developing. This could even help revive the effectiveness of other pest control strategies that the moths have already learned to ignore. It's a clever system, one that leverages science to outsmart an insect that has defied almost every traditional control method. Could this be the breakthrough farmers have been waiting for? All signs point to yes. In 2015, a greenhouse study showed just how effective genetically modified diamondback moths could be. They wiped out the population in just three generations. By 2017, testing moved to the real world, starting in New York State at Cornell University's Agricultural Research Station in Geneva. Over six batches, researchers released about 2,500 genetically modified males into the field. They then recaptured some of the moths to confirm their survival using a method known as mark release recapture, a classic approach for studying insect behavior and movement. Tracking the modified moths wasn't difficult because they carried a genetic marker. The results were promising. 95% of the moths flew less than 115 feet from their release point, staying in the field. They exhibited normal lifespans and competed effectively with wild males for mates, behaving just like their non-modified counterparts. Researchers also developed a mathematical model predicting that a self-limiting strain of these moths could control pest populations without needing insecticides. That's a huge advantage, avoiding the widespread use of chemicals that can harm the environment and other beneficial insects. The field trials marked a major step forward as they accounted for real-world challenges like weather conditions and predators. The genetically modified moths had already proven their worth in controlled greenhouse trials in the UK and US. But working in the field came with the usual obstacles, such as rain, mud, and the challenge of collecting traps. Despite this, the trials were a resounding success. The biggest benefit? Genetically modified moths are highly targeted. Their impact is limited to diamondback moths since the modified males only mate with females of their own species. This means there's no risk of affecting other insect populations, unlike the broader impact of chemical pesticides. It's a promising approach, offering farmers an effective, sustainable solution to combat one of agriculture's toughest pests, without relying on harmful poisons. Pesticides, while effective, can harm the environment, humans, and non-target species. This has led companies like Oxitec to propose alternatives, such as genetically modified GM insects, including moths and mosquitoes. Oxitec is currently seeking approval to sell its GM moths to US farmers, emphasizing that this approach isn't a panacea, but a valuable tool when combined with other pest control methods. However, the release of GM insects is not without controversy. When the USDA approved field trials, it sparked hundreds of furious comments, many expressing fears of unpredictable consequences. Critics often argue that introducing GM insects into the ecosystem is riskier than using traditional pesticides and likely more expensive. Additionally, organic farmers, who rely heavily on biological control methods due to restrictions on synthetic pesticides, cannot use genetically modified insects, limiting their applicability in the market. Beyond agricultural concerns, there's skepticism about the long-term effects of GM insects on ecosystems. Some experts stress the need for more extensive studies to understand whether gene editing could disrupt natural ecological cycles. A particularly troubling case involves Oxitex GM mosquitoes, designed to combat dengue and Zika viruses. In northeastern Brazil, from 2015 onward, a spike in babies born with microcephaly, a condition causing abnormally small heads, was linked to the Zika virus. Epidemiologists found a correlation between the areas with high rates of microcephaly and those where Oxitex GM mosquitoes were released years earlier. The GM mosquitoes, released in 2011 and 2012, were intended to reduce mosquito populations by introducing a lethal gene. While no definitive causal link has been established, 
Some studies have raised concerns that these releases might have inadvertently contributed to the Zika-linked birth defect outbreak. Critics argue that without long-term studies, the potential risks of GM insect releases remain poorly understood. While genetic engineering offers promising solutions to agricultural and public health challenges, it also raises complex ethical, environmental and health questions that require cautious examination. Could these innovations backfire, or will they pave the way for a safer, more sustainable future? The controversy surrounding genetically modified GM mosquitoes deepened when reports suggested that some of them survived longer than intended, breeding with wild populations instead of dying off as promised. This unplanned mixing may have contributed to mutant strains of the Zika virus gaining a selective advantage, possibly increasing their ability to damage human DNA. But does this mean GM insects should be banned outright? Not necessarily. While these concerns are valid, current evidence is insufficient to warrant outright panic. Rigorous research and monitoring remain essential to address such issues responsibly. If the GM Diamondback Moth project proves successful, it could revolutionize pest control. The technology offers significant potential, though its current applications are limited to a few crops. Diamondback moths primarily target cabbage, broccoli, and related crops, making their control highly specific. Still, Oxitec plans to expand this approach to tackle other pests, including a species with a much broader impact. Chrysodixis includens, commonly known as the soybean looper, this moth poses a serious threat in Brazil, where it ravages cotton, corn, and soybeans. Its resistance to insecticides has forced farmers to increase chemical use, escalating costs and environmental risks. Genetically modified soybeans have been introduced as an additional protective measure in South America, but the soybean looper is a master adapter. The pest can develop on at least 73 different host plants across 29 families. Originally known for damaging beans, cabbage, sweet potatoes, toe and tomatoes, the soybean looper has since expanded its impact. In 2021 alone, this pest caused an estimated $5.3 million in damages, a number expected to grow each year as the moth continues to adapt to current control methods. The ability to target pests like the soybean looper using GM technology could be a game-changer for agriculture. However, Scaling up this approach requires careful consideration of ecological impacts and rigorous oversight to ensure that unintended consequences, like those speculated in the Zika case, are minimized. While GM insects might not be a silver bullet, they could become a critical tool in the fight against resistant pests, reducing reliance on harmful pesticides and helping farmers safeguard their crops in the long term. The fall armyworm is an incredibly invasive pest, spreading rapidly across Africa with alarming speed. Within just 16 months, it was reported in at least 21 countries. In Rwanda, the pests were first noticed in February 2016, and by April, they had spread throughout the country, infesting about a quarter of all cornfields. In response, soldiers delivered pesticides via helicopter and collected caterpillars manually. The situation underscored the severity of the threat posed by the fall armyworm, which primarily targets corn, the region's main food crop, but can also attack nearly all major crops in Africa. The potential damage is immense. If only corn is affected, the loss could reach $3 billion annually. These caterpillars are voracious, and their adult form, moths, can travel hundreds of miles overnight, using high-altitude winds to find new places to lay eggs. Farmers in Brazil spend around $600 million annually combating this pest. One potential solution to control its spread is genetic modification, which Brazil has embraced as the first country to release genetically modified GM fall armyworm larvae commercially. Brazil has a history of using genetically modified insects. In recent years, GM larvae have been tested in cornfields in regions such as Sao Paulo and Mato Grosso. Initial trials began in 2020 on small plots, expanding in 2023. The company Oxitec, responsible for these experiments, has announced larger-scale trials but has yet to provide details. While GM mosquitoes have been tested in other countries, including the Cayman Islands, Malaysia and Panama, only Brazil continues open trials. Concerns about environmental and human health impacts 
have stalled similar projects in places like Spain and the UK. However, the use of genetic modification is expanding, with some programs exploring the potential of insects as carriers of viruses to protect crops from pests, drought, or pollution. One such initiative, the Insect Allies program, launched in 2016 with $45 million in funding, aims to deliver protective genes to plants. Critics, however, warn that this technology could be weaponized to spread diseases and devastate crops. Spider silk is another area of scientific fascination, renowned for its strength, six times stronger than Kevlar used in bulletproof vests. Despite its potential, industrial-scale spider silk production is nearly impossible due to challenges in farming spiders, including their cannibalistic nature and limited silk production. Scientists have turned to genetic modification, inserting spider silk genes into silkworms. These modified silkworms now produce tough, flexible, and biodegradable fibers resembling spider silk, though slightly less strong and elastic. The resulting material has numerous applications, from medical sutures and bandages to potential uses in body armor and eco-friendly textiles. This innovation could also replace synthetic materials like polyester and nylon, reducing microplastic pollution. Bees have faced severe challenges in recent years, particularly in Europe. In 2008, millions of bees in Germany, France, the Netherlands and Italy died during the corn planting season. Germany even established special disposal bins for beekeepers to discard affected hives. The culprit was a pesticide containing clothianidin, which was intended to protect crops but instead caused severe damage to bees' nervous systems, leading to disorientation, sterility, and colony collapse. While reducing harmful pesticide use could help, bees face additional threats, necessitating innovative solutions. Genetic engineering could eventually create bee species more resistant to viruses, parasites, and pesticides. However, this technology is still in its infancy, limited to laboratory studies and raises concerns among beekeepers and environmentalists about potential unintended consequences. Recent research on roundworms offers intriguing insights into aging. Scientists genetically modified roundworms to harness light for cellular energy, effectively extending their lifespans. Aging is closely tied to the malfunctioning of mitochondria, the energy centers of cells. By boosting mitochondrial function using light, researchers improved the worm's health and longevity. While these findings are a long way from being applied to humans, they suggest potential breakthroughs in understanding and possibly controlling the aging process. Finally, genetically modified insects are being explored for waste management. Australian scientists are modifying soldier flies to enhance their ability to break down organic waste. These flies are already used commercially to dispose of food waste, but genetic modifications could expand their diet to include a broader range of waste types. With approximately 1 billion tons of food waste generated annually, such innovations could play a vital role in reducing environmental impact. Modified insects might also be adapted to purify pollutants or transform harmful substances into less toxic compounds, showcasing their potential as unsung heroes of environmental conservation.